Hi guys and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily. So before we get started, I just want to give a little heads up. The first like five minutes of this video, I recorded it yesterday. I actually recorded the whole entire thing yesterday. For whatever reason, the first five minutes, the audio did not pick up. But you'll see after we talk about the first book, we will transition into the clips from yesterday. What we are talking about today is the books that I read in January. I read five books. One of them is nonfiction, so we're just going to leave that one out of this conversation because I don't really like to rate nonfiction. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to rate these books based on how well they would do as movie adaptations. So if that is something that is of interest to you, stick around, get comfortable. I have my iced coffee with me. Let's just sit back, relax, and talk about the books that I read in January. Okay, I'm pulling out my notes for book number one. The first one we're talking about is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This is a bit of... A controversial book and I'll tell you why. So the genre for Juniper and Thorn is pretty much a dark fantasy. There are a million and one trigger warnings for everything. Okay the light went off we're just gonna roll with that for a few minutes. There are a million and one trigger warnings for SA, CSA, but just be aware it's very serious. Um, lots of trigger warnings, lots of gore. If you have a metaphobia, I do, which is like a fear of throwing up. <laughs> You might want to steer away from this one. The average Goodreads rating we have for Juniper and Thorn is a 3.68. So like average. My rating was a three and a half. So this book, to make a long story short, is about a witch who is 23 years old living with her three older sisters and her father. Their father is extremely cruel, does not let them leave the house, and is very like racist and just against modernization of the city that they live in. He is very old-fashioned in his ways and has a lot of criticisms about the people coming to live in the city and all of the technology coming into the city and he thinks everything should stay as it was. And I believe that's like equated to like xenophobia. Maybe homophobia is a trigger warning? I don't know. Just all the phobias are trigger warnings, okay? So like just be aware this guy sucks. The main gist of the story is the youngest sister sneaks out with her older sisters one night and she meets a ballet dancer. She falls in love with him and the story kind of picks up from there as we are grappling with her adjustment into accepting like her womanhood and her sexuality as a survivor of trauma. It's very dark. Um, I feel like the gore was a bit much for me. That's just a personal preference. Aside from that, it was pretty good. Um, I wish there was a little more depth to the setting because the setting seemed like it would have been a really cool place to elaborate on. Why is my chair moving? The setting just felt like it could have been much more and it could have been like a bigger part and it could have been almost its own character, but it wasn't. So I just wish there was a little bit more to that. The little notes I have written down is that it's basically a story of coming to terms with womanhood and sexuality after trauma. And it's a story about female rage, which I think is very accurate. So let's talk about the adaptation portion of this. I feel like this would be a very difficult movie to get right. I feel like if it was right, it could be high. However, I just don't foresee it being a good movie because of the level of gore and trauma and trigger warnings. I just wouldn't want to watch this. Like hearing it described to me was enough. I don't want to actually see it. So for that reason, I'm giving this a five out of 10. The next book we have is When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. This is like a suspense murder mystery and it has very much a true crime kind of vibe to it. There's a lot of aspects of criminology and psychology tied into it that make it feel like you're really a part of the detective's work and you're really working to figure out what's going on. However, it fell very short for me. The average Goodreads rating for this book is a 3.85, so it is higher than Juniper and Thorn, but I think Juniper and Thorn has a lower average rating because of the gore, and I think because a lot of people go into it misunderstanding that it's like a very dark book, so I think it gets lower ratings for that. Anyways, I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars. I really did not like it. Our main character is this detective who is very haunted by not only 
cases that she's dealt with in the past. She's like a missing persons detective, but also with her own past. We don't know exactly what happened, but we know that there was some trauma involving her husband and a child. So we don't know what went on, but she is on leave from work and she's visiting her childhood home. So she goes back to the town she grew up in and Lo and behold, there was a missing persons case that was active when she lived there as a teenager. It was a girl that she knew when she was younger and the case was never solved. When she returns to this town, there are other cases that are just opening up and she takes a very big interest in them and wants to solve them. That's pretty much the gist of the story. She's working together with an old friend who is a detective for that town who is trying to solve the cases. And the two of them are working together to figure out these missing persons cases. It's good. It just fell really flat for me and I just didn't care about her, nor did I think she was like qualified to be doing any of the things she was doing. So I just didn't really like it. Little notes I have written down is, it feels like a true crime story. It's a troubled detective haunted by her own history and past cases, which I already mentioned. And I don't know, I just really didn't like it. I didn't care about the main characters, nor did I really care too much about the missing persons. Like I didn't, just wasn't fully flushed out. It felt like there were a lot of plot holes and like just things missing. So in terms of a screen adaptation, I'm giving this one a four out of 10. I'm giving it even lower than Juniper and Thorn just because I truly think I would be bored out of my mind to watch a movie and or show about this because truthfully it felt like nothing happened. We just kept getting flashbacks of her life when she was living there as a teen. A lot of it felt like half flushed out and like it just felt pointless like I just didn't care and at the end of the story I was just like okay why like why so I can't imagine ever sitting down and enjoying watching this let alone reading it I just I didn't like it it was a miss for me so for a screen adaptation we're giving it a four the next one I have is Kakai, and this is by Veshnavi Patel. This book is incredible. I'm just going to start it off with that. This was my favorite read of the month, quite literally one of my favorite reads in the past year. Insanely well written. So the genre of this book is fantasy, but at its core, it's a retelling of an Indian epic poem called Ramayana. The average Goodreads rating for this is a 4.2 and my rating for this is a 5. I give this a 5 because I am obsessed with it and I wish I picked it up sooner. So if you're unfamiliar with Ramayana, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. I looked up how to pronounce it and I think I'm doing it right. Please correct me if I'm wrong. The story of Ramayana is about this evil queen, Kakai, who banishes her stepson, who is, let me restart that. Kikai is married to a king. In this society, the king has three wives. Each wife has children. Kikai wants her son to be the next king. Kikai wants her son to be the next king. She doesn't want any of the other wives' sons to inherit the throne. However, the oldest son is set to. So Kikai banishes him using a boon that she earned. A boon is basically a favor that she was awarded for a huge act of bravery which you'll learn about so she was rewarded a boon from the king and she uses it on the king to ask for the oldest son to be banished so that her son can rule so in this story she is seen as like this evil stepmother and Vishnavi Patel took it unto herself to recreate Kakai's origin story and this is like a villain origin story flipped on its head because we learn about who Kakai is, her motives, her as a person and she's fleshed out to be more than a villain and we understand why she did the things she did and it just all comes together so well. There's a lot of fantasy elements because there's gods in this story and Kakai kind of harnesses her own sort of power. She has this ability to manipulate emotions and feelings and I won't get too into that because it's a really cool um, like description the way you find out about it. The little notes I have written down for this is the story gives women in history depth and more than just side character stories. It's a villain origin story that's flipped upside down and it's a woman who questions power and roles at its core. It's fantastic. 
fantastic. So in terms of a screen adaptation, I'm going to give this a seven. I think this would be an incredible film. I just think it would also be really hard to incorporate the fantasy elements into it. So I'm knocking a couple points for that. I think that it would do better as a book because we can like learn the emotions better through writing, through inner dialogue. So I think as a book, it's a five star. As a movie, it would be a little bit less because I don't think its punches would hit as well. But I do think it would be a fantastic movie. So if anybody who makes movies wants to pick this up, please do because I would watch it in a heartbeat. The last one we're going to talk about is called My Husband. This is by Maud Ventura and this is basically lit fic. It's a feminist story about a very unwell woman. That's it. This follows a woman's inner dialogue over a week-long period and from the very beginning we can tell this woman is obsessed with her husband. She predicts his every move, predicts their every conversation. Her life revolves around him. They have children and she puts her husband before them. She is just very infatuated and obsessed to the point of issues. The average rating on Goodreads for this is a 371. I gave this a 4. I thought it was very good and it's also very short so this is like a one day read. The little notes I have written down are this is about obsession, no plot, just vibes because truthfully that's it, no plot, just vibes. We spend like 50 pages obsessing over the fact that the husband was asked what fruit his wife is most like and he said a clementine and she just cannot stop thinking about that. It gave me similar vibes to Gone Girl and I love Gone Girl. So for that reason, we're giving it a high adaptation rating. We are giving this a seven as well. I feel like this would do so well as a movie where we have... <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I feel like I would eat up a movie about an unwell woman obsessed with her husband and like plotting her every move. Like Gone Girls kind of like that, but in a very different way. And fantastic. It's fantastic. So I feel like this would do really well. It's super interesting into like the psyche of the woman. It also ends on a bit of a plot twist. So I feel like that could have a really good point in the movie. I don't know. I'm very, so I don't know why I was about to say I'm very excited like it's gonna be a movie it's probably not but it's fantastic if you're into Gone Girl you would love this okay so that is it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed this I had a really good time fleshing out these books this way rather than just sitting and talking about them I don't know why I felt like it was easier for me to discuss them if you've read any of these let me know thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week for another video